Well, hello, visitors to and denizens of the YouTubeiverse. I'm John, your social hermit in the woods. And in this video, I wanted to talk about how I built my minivan one person micro RV conversion. So stick around. So before we look any further at the actual build, let's talk a little bit about the design criteria I had, which led to what I built and the platform I built it on. I wanted this to work well for one person. I did want to have an onboard cassette style RV toilet. Um, I did want to have cooking facilities, but I decided it was not critical that those be useful in all conditions and all weathers. If the weather's really miserable, uh, there are self-heating type meals you could prepare inside, or maybe you go to a restaurant, or maybe you have a cold dinner in those cases. Um, I did not want any permanent modifications to the vehicle, or at least none that were clearly visible and significant. I wanted something that could be converted uh, in and out by one person in, let's say, 30 minutes. Um, it needed to be solid, it needed to be stable, uh, comfortable, have storage capacity. Um, and for the vehicle itself, I wanted a lot of uh, readily available parts not just in big cities, but if you're traveling in smaller areas and you need a part or you need to take it to a mechanic, a vehicle that parts were available and they knew how to work on. On the vehicle side, all of this led me to looking at uh, the Dodge Grand Caravan series. One of the things it has is what is called stow and go seating. So the seats all fold down into the floor, meaning you have a flat surface to work on to do your build from. But when you pull your things out, you just pop those seats back up. You don't actually have to unbolt them, take them out, store them someplace, and put them in and out. They just fold in and out. Um, Dodge Grand Caravans are also extremely good when it comes to parts availability and mechanic familiarity. These are an incredibly common vehicle. Uh, my particular one is now approaching 18 years old. And yet I've had the interesting experience of walking into a, a parts store like a Lordco or a Napa, looking for a particular part they have on the shelf fitments for let's say five different models of vehicle out and available and guess what one of them will still fit and it is the proper match for an 18 year old dodge caravan gives you an idea of how common these parts are so dodge caravan one person build galley washroom um that was where i started why that vehicle, and then we'll see how I built it from there. So as mentioned, I chose a Dodge Caravan, among other reasons, because of the stow and go seating. You'll see that I leave one third row seat up. This acts as my normal seating position when I'm not in the bed. Leaving that seat up also provides a large storage compartment, the area it would normally be stowing in, and we'll see how it is I design my water tanks, both my fresh water and my gray water waste, to fit down in that space. One immediate thing you should note is that the stow and go seating does not provide a flat level floor. So you are gonna have to custom fit the heights of things on the bed to make everything work. Also note the convenient placement of these large U-shaped metal fixtures in the floor. These is where the seats would lock into, but they are going to turn out to be a fantastic place to attach our bed down to keep it from moving around. The bed frame itself is made out of two by twos and two by threes with some smaller one by two lath slats for the top. The height of the bed was chosen specifically such that I could slide a cassette toilet underneath the front end here behind the driver's seat. In order to make the bed level, I had to set that end of the build, make the three sets of somewhat U-shaped uh, support legs struts and then use a level to adjust the height of the rearward ones which are going to be shorter because of the way the stow and go seats fit. So you can set the first part, use a level, mark those rear ones off with a pencil and then cut them to height. Additionally, you'll note if you look closely along the edge of the bed frame there, there is a piece of weather stripping. This is an idea I got from a channel I will highly recommend and I will put a link to in the description called Eric Loves Earth, who has a handful of really interesting and thought-provoking videos on minivan camper designs. 
Um, his are somewhat fancier than mine, but certainly gave me a lot of uh, very good ideas. Bear in mind that the seat reclines slightly, so the room for your feet is a little bit shorter than you think it's going to be if you're lying on your back and they stick upright. But generally, you build this bed, supports at the front and the back, and then you place the middle one such that it will be exactly over those uh, metal seat connection points. We're going to use a set of U-bolts to clamp the bed in place. You'll note the surface of the bed is made with slats as opposed to a solid piece of, let's say, thin plywood. This was done for a couple of reasons. One was to allow ventilation on the underside of the mattress, but the other was for potential expansion. My thought was if I wanted to build a slide out table or even expand this to a double width bed system, I could use interdigitating sliding pieces of wood that would support here on one end and have a vertical support on this side, but you could slide it in and out. Now it turned out to be a little too low for a table and I haven't wanted to put a second side bed in here, but it gave me potential future expansion that way. It also saved a little bit of weight. The wrench used to tighten and loosen these screws as needed is obviously something that I re regularly keep in the vehicle. You could put a fair bit of tension on these until that metal bracket bows down very slightly and that will keep this absolutely solid in movement. The mattress and matching cover were made to my specifications from a local foam shop. The electrical connection for the powered cooler in the rear goes in here behind the bed. It only runs when the vehicle ignition is on, which is a good thing because it draws about 55 watts. For simplicity, I'm going to put my water tank in at this stage. Both my fresh water, which is a uh, 20 liter square Reliance jug, and my gray water fit down in here, which puts the center of gravity on all that weight quite low, which is nice. Plus, it's very going to be, turns out to be a very convenient place for the rest of the galley. Now, before we attach the galley, there's something on the end of the bed we should notice. That carriage bolt sticking out right there with a wing nut and a washer. We're going to use that in a moment. The galley section itself is made out of uh, nice surface plywood. I incorporated a couple of drawer hinges to make a platform for my table. And I did build a sink. We'll take a close up of that later. I couldn't find a sink small enough, so I got a plastic bowl and I used a hole saw and some uh, 3M 5200 sealant and some PVC fittings to make a little sink. And then there's a kind of marine or RV style, what's called a uh, rocker pump here to, for the water supply. Now, what we're gonna use that carriage bolt for is, there is a matching hole that you can probably see right there in the back of the wooden frame for the galley unit. So let's go ahead and slide this in place with that bolt going through the hole. That slides into place. Then all you have to do is put the washer on there and then the wing nut. Useful wing nut is so you don't need to get a tool in there. Okay, let's take a closer look. So there you have the galley, and it is now seated. There is just enough of a lip along the side here for that plywood to rest down. It rests neatly there, and it's secured there. We have the sink, and one nice touch that I added was a swinging paper towel roll holder there. We have our sink, we have our drain, we have our faucet. The water attachment to the pump goes up via a hose, and then there's a hose clamp. That hose clamp needs to be accessible because the easiest way to get this water tank in and out is to actually disconnect the hose and remove the whole system. I will note it is possible to refill the water. Um, actually, from the other side, if you drop the seat, you can come in through here uh, is a good way to get to the water fill line, but it's still important to be able to get that uh, hose detached if needed. Next, we can reassemble. I have a little rack here for uh, things like spices, soap, 
easier if there's nothing in the rack, but doable either way. There we go. That's that. Paper towel roll. A butane stove goes on the slider. And note the wooden stops forward and backward to keep it from sliding out. That perfectly fits in. Slides in and into place. Next in, we'll install the cooler. This is a Peltier type electric. Uh, so in theory, you could do either heating or cooling. I use a large bungee cord to keep this from moving around. And that just locks to the bed frame. Holds in right there. The electrical lead comes forward. And into its little lead in there. Now, a little cutting board you can store there. Notice this design doesn't stop me from being able to get immediate access to my jack and tire tools. Next step, we'll put in the gray water container, which is just a small bottle uh, with some air vent holes drilled so it doesn't back up. And that just fits in here like so. And that can just slide on and off. I can adjust the height by screwing this pipe nipple here to adjust things, but that just fits in. Various cookware, thermoses and the like, can be stored down in here for ready access from the galley. Large folding handle fry pan, matching spatula, set of dishes. Next in go two plastic crates. One of these contains a barbecue, which is nice enough that I'll probably show that in conjunction with my picnic table in another video. And then the other box is actually the box that the stove came in, but I use it for keeping all of my cookware in. There we go. And that fits there and exactly inside the notches on this. Stove still comes in and out. None of this can move around. Now it's just a question of storing in other food items. In my pantry space. Incidentally, this is a self-heating meal. Again, I said if the weather's really bad and I can't use the galley out here, I could just use this to heat itself while all closed up inside. So I like to carry one of those. I also like to carry a garden hose with an end shutoff valve as a way to refuel my water tank. If there's a tap someplace, I can hook up this up, turn it on at the tap, but be able to control it here, bring that hose around probably from the front side and refill my water tank in situ just by unscrewing the top on it. So this stays tucked away back in here as well. A Dometic cassette toilet fits exactly right there. Remember I said that was one criteria for size of the bed. And then a bungee cord is used to secure that in place while driving so that it doesn't bounce around. Other material in plastic tubs to help organize it can come in from the side. Larger items like the folding picnic table are kept along this side, readily accessible from the driver's side sliding door. Don't forget a set of poles for setting an awning up off the side of the vehicle. And of course, a couple of lawn chairs will always be handy. Something else I bring along, but I've never used, at least to date, is one of these 12 volt uh, heating devices. And I've got some uh, foil trays that could go in there and so you could like dump a can of stew in there. You plug this in for a half an hour um, and it will heat that up. Again, something you can do without the hatch open. The power draw on this is enough. I would really want the engine running if I was doing this. Um, otherwise, you have some chance of having a dead battery. I have ways of dealing with a dead battery. I'll get to those later. But anyways, while we're building the galley and stuff, one other maybe useful item. Who knows? If I ever use it, I'll have a better idea. Stuff that I want frequent access to 
all goes in a bag. So this is oh, everything from barbecue lighters to uh, an internal uh, camp light that I use at night inside here. A 12 volt small booster pack. This is one of the ways I can start my engine if the battery goes down. Rabbit access stuff like that goes right here. Now, on the bed frame there, you'll note some eye hooks on either side of that section. And what I do is I have a small bungee cargo net. This is actually designed for motorcycling. It used to be on the back of one of my motorcycles, but now does a great job here of keeping all that neatly in place while I drive. It doesn't get out of the way. A larger uh, rechargeable booster pack with 12 volt and inverter 120 outlets and a USB port goes right there to serve as my house electric bank. Reflectix panels for covering the windows at night roll up and store between the driver's seat and the bed and the Covia Cupid heater and a few other things. Uh, a claw lock for the wheel, steering wheel, and a windshield scraper, long things like that all fit there and are readily accessible. So a quick couple of final observations. There are pop-down coat hangers, two on either side of the main cabin, and what I've done is simply gotten a thin fiberglass uh, marker pole, the type used for mark, like marking your driveway for snowfalls, and that fits neatly in there, tied in with a zip tie, and gives you a clothes hanger or a place to hang your light. Uh, jackets and things like that hung on this side, hang down outside the bed here. They do not interfere with your shoulder checking. They're too far back. You don't even see them. And you can fit a couple of hats across the front there. The second issue is a table. If you're going to sit here, you'd like to have something to eat off of and something to work from. Originally, I thought about putting a metal profile rail here with a tabletop that could clip in, have a swing out leg, and you could slide it back and forth. And I'm sure that would be very nice. But I never got around to it because instead, I cut myself a piece of, this is about uh, 3 8 inch, very dense, very heavy plastic, which I happened to come across. Cut it neatly to about a, uh, about a foot and a half by two foot kind of size with rounded corners. And I just sit back and set this here. If I want to use my laptop or I want to eat inside, this makes a perfectly good little tabletop. Um, if you just put your laptop down on the soft mattress, it'll sink down and it may not cool properly. This gives it a nice firm surface to have an air gap for airflow. You can take it out, you can clean it, and when you're done, it just slides in completely out of the way back alongside that seat. And there's the clothes hangers in use. A couple of other things to note on the vehicle. Uh, these window uh, deflectors here were one of the first modifications I, I put on the vehicle. Um, when you're camping and it's raining, you can still roll your front windows down a little bit, have airflow, rain doesn't get in. Second thing is I added a roof cargo carrier. I'm thinking that'll be a good spot probably for my two-person inflatable kayak to go. And you'll notice another one of these orange poles, the type I use for my uh, coat hangers inside, my clotheslines, and that is strapped on out here. This provides a forward attachment point, and the railing itself is a rear attachment point for a large tarp that I can put off the side here to a couple of posts, guide those out, and then I have like an RV style awning, but one that was very cheap and is easy to take up and down. And again, there's no permanent modifications to the vehicle. This is just a couple of zip ties, which the UV degrade, so those should probably get replaced every year or so. But a couple of those, and there's actually a bit of uh, thin, squishy vinyl tubing over that to keep it from rubbing on and uh, damaging the paint. And I think this will be the last thing to notice is there is an extra antenna mounted here on the car, so that was a rather insignificant uh, permanent modification. And that, in turn, works with a 2-meter FM uh, amateur radio down there, running up to a uh, readily accessible but not very visible microphone with a full set of hand controls. Uh, BC Law, you're allowed to use your push to talk button, but not the other controls while you're driving, but while you're parked, all those other 
buttons for controlling repeaters and the like are done. So there you go. Uh, hopefully you found that of some interest, an overview of uh, how I built my little one-person minivan camper conversion, why I chose to do it this way, uh, how I installed everything, and the putting this in and taking it out, especially if you're not taking video of it, is really, it's a one-person job and maybe 30 minutes. Uh, it's very simple. You need one ratcheting 13 millimeter wrench and one screwdriver and a place to put everything. Very easy to do. With that, this is John, the social hermit in the woods, saying thanks for watching and goodbye until next time.